Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and we have the weekly ranking show again this week with a couple of changes to the rankings overall. Not so much the top 10, but overall rankings in the top 100. Some big results last week, and of course, points are back after no points at Wimbledon. So let's go have a look at the past results. Four tournaments last week, two on the men's and two on the women's. Starting with the results on the WTA, we had the Swiss Open with Martic beating Danilovic 6-4-6-2 to lift another trophy in her career. It was a clay court event as well, which was kind of strange. We had a couple of clay court events this week. At the Budapest Open, we had Pera defeating Krunic 6-3, 6-3 to lift a WTA trophy. And both Martic and Pera got boosted in the rankings because of their results. Over on the men's side, we had the Swedish Open, another clay court event. Serendolo beat Baez. Both players had a very, very good week. And he beat him in straight sets, 7-6, 6-2. And with that result, he got a career high ranking. We'll talk about that in a second. And over the new Port Open, a grass court event. We had Cressy defeating Bublik in an epic match, 2-6-6-3-7-6. Tie break to decide it, and Cressy lifting a trophy as well. So, some big results there for both the men and the women on the grass and the clay courts, which is strange because, of course, we have the American season coming up soon. Let's start with the WTA rankings first, and no real changes to the top 10 with Shviontek staying at number one. Contivate staying at two. Zachary close behind at number three. Badossa very close behind at number four. Jabor very close behind Badossa. Only 20 points in it at number five. Sabalenka comes in at number six. But we had a change to the bottom half of the top 10 with Pagula going up one spot to number seven, which is a career high for her, pushing Collins down to number eight because Collins lost a lot of points from this time last year at some events. So Pagula getting a little bit of a reward despite not playing this week. Muguruza comes in at number nine and Raducanu rounds up the top 10 for this week. Having a look at the WTA race of the finals, and there was no change because most of those players who are in the top 10 didn't play. Sviontek, we know she's already qualified. She's at number one, with Jabor at number two, Goff at number three, Pagula comes in at number four, Zachary at number five, Kazakina at number six, Vodosa at seven, Bencic at eight, who did play this week but didn't add to her total, Kudamatova at nine, and Daniel Collins rounds out the top 10 for the WTA race of the finals this week. Having a look at some of the players that went up in the rankings, and as, as I said, both Martic and Pera, who won titles this week, they went up very, very high. Martic, 30 spots higher than last week to number 55, and Pera, 49 spots higher than last week to number 81 in the world, so... Some big results for those ladies winning trophies resulted in good rankings. And some of the players that went down on the WTA, Putin Seva, she went down seven spots, number 39, after failing to defend points from this time last year. And Zedenshek, she went down 30 spots to number 85 in the world, again, losing points from last year's events. So not the big names that we're used to seeing, but still some big results there and some big drops for some key players. Jumping over to the ATP rankings now, and there was no change to the top 10 with Medvedev staying at number one, Zverev staying at two, Rafa at three, Sidzi Pass at four, Kasper Ruud at five, Alcarez comes in at number six, Novak Djokovic, the Wimbledon champion at number seven, Rublev stays at eight, Ogie Eliassime at nine, and Yannick Sinner rounds at the top 10 for this week. But a lot of those players are actually playing this week. Alcarez Perez, Rublev, amongst a few of them. So we'll keep an eye on those guys. Maybe this time next week, might see some changes in the rankings depending on their results. Having a look at the race of the finals now, and there was actually some change here. No massive changes. Rafa stays at number one, with Tsitsipas staying at number two. Alcarez comes in at number three, with Rude at number four. Zverev stays at five, and we don't know when we're going to see him yet. Maybe US Open, but he'll stay at five until somebody overtakes him. Medvedev stays at number six. But we had a change in the bottom part of the top ten, with Eliasim going down, and Rublev gaining a few points from playing this week, losing in the Bastard semi-finals. He goes up to number seven, so a little bit of a change there for both those guys. Taylor Fritz, he's at number nine, and Novak Djokovic is at number ten. And we don't know when we're going to see Nole again, hopefully during the US Open series if they let him, but he's hanging on to that top ten spot for now. Having a look at the rankings outside the top ten and some of the players that went up in the rankings, like I said, Serendolo, he's at a career-high ranking number 30 in the world after winning a title last week, nine spots higher than last week. And Dominic Team, he's gone up 65 spots to 274 in the world. He's back on the rise. He didn't have a great result. He got a couple of wins last week, which was good enough, I guess, for him. But he is starting to make it back up the rankings. So we'll keep an eye on Dominic Team over the next few weeks. Some of the players that went down in the rankings were players that lost points from this time last year. Grinja Busta, he went down five spots to 23 in the world. And Kranovic, he went down 13 spots, number 43 in the world. Both played very well in Hamburg last year. So Hamburg was actually following Wimbledon last year. So Hamburg's coming up this week. Maybe those two players can regain their points if they have another good week. So there you have it. They are the rankings for the week. No big surprises in the top 10 or even on the race of the finals too much. A couple of changes here and there, but a lot of those players that I mentioned are playing this week. And there's still, you know, clay court events happening this week. It's very strange. The US Open Series doesn't start until the end of this month. So we've got about one or two more weeks of this kind of clay court tennis that's about to finish for the year. 
And then we get to the serious stuff where we're talking about American hardcore season. But let me know down in the comments below, who are you shocked to see in the rankings? Maybe shocked to not see in the rankings. Maybe you think has had a better year than maybe the rankings show. Again, let me know down in the comments below, who are you most shocked to maybe not see in the rankings this week?